appreciate when he's playing that type of game against Stanford when they can just play the clock. Yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal. You know, uh, a lot of credit to them. They came out and, and did what they wanted to do. You know, that's that's been their, their identity and uh, been very successful with it. Um, I just got to find a better way, more answers for the guys to get off the field. Is fatigue at all a factor? Well, I think he probably became a factor. Yeah, you know, with the, the fact that we couldn't get off the off the field, you know, sort of the plays definitely started to pile up. And, um, yeah, we got to do a better job all around when it comes to rushing, when it comes to tackling, when it comes to everything. You know, and then I got to find a way to find a better calls too. What made it so difficult, difficult to generate a pass rush against Stanford? But the well, shit, we never got them out, of, out of their running game. You know, when their running game is a viable threat at all times, when when they're winning games, they don't mind running on third and seven. You know, when there's always a run threat, you know, you have to, you got to defend it. When you do that, it obviously slows down your pass rush a little bit. Um, at the same time, when we get there, we got to we got to bring it down. You know, so got home a few times, just just didn't didn't finish the sack, unfortunately. How much of a setback do you think? It's frustrating, you know. I, I'm most frustrated, most disappointed for our seniors. You know, here's a group of guys that that really have been the catalyst for turning this program around. You can say what you want about the coaches, but I think it really comes from them. These kids have done a great job. Uh, three nine win seasons in a row hasn't been done for a while around here. Uh, you know, they, they, they've helped change the culture, and, uh, and for them to go out this way is that's for me the biggest disappointment. You know, I would love to have them go out on top, an opportunity to play Oregon again for the Pac-12 championship, but uh, but they don't, and uh, because of that, yeah, we're, we're all crushed in a lot of ways. After UCLA, I know you all preached another game, after USC, another game, another game. Right. Players, the players, you think them being kids, they, they really bought that, they really believe it, you know, was there any kind of a hangover let down? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I felt like, you know, for what it's worth, we had a great week of preparation, you know, and usually that's indicative of how you're going to play. Um, you know, had we kind of let off the throttle a little bit, uh, attention to detail wasn't there in practice, I might say that we had that hangover, but um, that wasn't the case this week. You know, I felt it all. Uh, it just, our execution today was pretty good. You know, our finish. It was, it was technical stuff more than it was schematic stuff. You know, just tackling, getting on blocks, and covering your guy. You know, simple stuff. Yeah, simple stuff. Similar bad habits that you guys maybe got in and other games in a month ago. Yeah, I don't know with bad habits, you know, just guys lapses of, of of technique, you know, stuff that we harp, stuff that we stress, stuff that we work on daily, you know, so it's disappointing to have a, a technical setbacks like that. It really is, because they were starting to come along, starting to buy in, really starting to develop something. And then, you know, it, it disappointed. They're disappointed, we're disappointed as coaches. It's just uh, not the way we want to finish the season. Stanford's gonna build its reputation of being a physical thing. Right. How much of their physicality do you guys probably understand? Yeah, they're a physical team. Um, Got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, um, and it's one of those things where when they get up early like that and uh, and they don't necessarily, um, they're not forced into to situations where they got to stretch the field and they got to they gotta come out of that. You know, they, they can stay, you know, three tight ends, two backs, and kind of pound the rock. Uh, they're very dangerous because that's what they're built for. Just we never got them in that situation where they, they were forced to score, they were forced to, to, to get out of that. So, uh, you know, you got to give them a lot of credit for that. What was that that Hogan did? Broke tackles, extended plays, um, kept his eyes downfield. Uh, yeah, he found that he found the guy. You know, virtually every time he extended that play, he found that guy. You know, and, and uh, you know, we got to do a better job from. Uh, Standpoint, from a tackling standpoint, we get to them, and then obviously from a coverage standpoint, it's just it all works hand in hand. At the same time, I got to do a better job of mixing it up more, maybe, and providing um, some different stunts and fronts and coverages. Eric Hendricks, his last name, uh, at the most well. Right. In the career leading tackler in UCLA history, what is he meant to this moment? Shoot, he, he is uh, the heart and soul. I, I don't know if it's just the defense. I, you know, I, I would uh, argue that he's the heart and soul of this team in a lot of ways. Not a guy that, that talks a lot and says a lot, but uh, what he does say is gold. And he leads by example by being that same guy every single day. 
not just on Saturdays, but you know, really Sunday through uh, Sunday through Friday, and uh, it's been a great example. Um, definitely makes our job as defensive coaches easier because it's just such a, a vivid example of what it's supposed to look like. And, uh, you know, it's I'm uh, you know I've I've been honored to, to coach him as long as we have. You know, should have had him for three years. That's a long time for two guys to be together and uh, enjoyed every moment of it. Thanks, Brett.